Let's get to the data which is coming out in the next hour and a half and the kind of tone that's been set for this market. Julia, what are you expecting the next uh, hour and a half ahead of that data? Well, it does look like weakness, and that's on the back of some data which was out on Friday. And the biggest market moving data that we see coming out uh, on the economic calendar, and that was the US job starters. The numbers were worse than expected. The market was expecting 100,000 jobs to have been created in June, but we only saw 80,000. But it wasn't so bad that it really increased people's perception of quantitative easing or more QE uh, in the form of QE3. So, altogether, we did see risk assets selling off. In fact, gold prices, which which are traditionally the beneficiary of speculation around more quantitative easing, actually under 1600 US an ounce, finishing the New York session at 1584. So we could see those gold miners coming under a fair bit of pressure uh, this morning. We also saw equities sold off, commodity prices being sold off. In fact, copper prices were down more than 2% or oil prices were down more than 3%. It looks like the market's still going to be firmly focused on Europe. And uh, today, later today, we will see a meeting of uh, Eurogroup finance ministers kicking off. So it's going to be closely watched. And of course, those numbers coming out of China, the CPI numbers today, the trade numbers tomorrow, and then on Friday, a raft of numbers, the second quarter GDP numbers with a 7.5% growth rate is expected. Now, initially, most economists thought that growth in China had bottomed in the first quarter, but it's now, it's now looking like bets are on for a bottoming in that second quarter with those interest rate cuts, hopefully starting to kick in but we'll also see retail sales industrial production numbers so this is going to be a massive week in terms of the numbers coming out of china but also one eye um, on europe uh, with the luca now uh, again you know that they have after all have they not been uh, kind of flagging some slowdown to the market as recently as may i'm just wondering about, about the size of the selling at the moment is that, is that overdone given we that we kind of got a heads up we have a look at Aluka shares absolutely tumbling this morning, down by around about 20% on the open. And that's on the back of uh, the production cuts that we're seeing coming through. And I guess if you have a look at Aluka as a business, what it is is a price setter. It's responsible for about 35% of the zircon market and about 30% of the titanium dioxide market. So it is a leader in the area, and I guess it's reflective of the very shaky environment. Not only have we seen reduction in the, the forecast that they've had, uh, zircon now predicted to be between 200 to 300,000 tons this year instead of the 400,000 originally predicted. But the first half numbers have been extremely soft as well. They're predicting 200 to 300,000 uh, metric tons for the full year. But in the first half, they've only managed to sell 87,000. If we and the same type of numbers, if we have a look at retail as well as synthetic retail, retail they're now predicting 140,000 to 200,000 uh, metric tons. They were previously predicting 200. 25,000 and if we have a look at the first half numbers extremely soft only 85,000 uh, metric tons being sold and synthetic return now predicting for the full year 170 to 220,000 uh, metric tons that's down from previous forecast of 310 million uh, 310 thousand metric tons and the first half looking quite soft at 101 a thousand uh, metric tons so if we have a look at our Lucas shares Unfortunately, absolutely tumbling on the market today. This is the one-year chart. So the shares falling 20% on the open on the back of those production cuts. And those production cuts, of course, designed to help support price because Aluka is a price setter and it's so big in both the zircon, zircon as well as titanium dioxide market. But gold didn't really get a lift um, if QE3 is being talked about and hoped about in the coming weeks. That was quite interesting. But I think the focus on gold stocks anyway today, Gold One's put out at quarterly production numbers. You've been taking a look at those. What did you make of them? We start to see quarterly production production reports now trickling through so we'll see a couple coming out this week and then next week will be the big ones BHP, Rio and Fortescue but today we have seen a smaller gold stock coming out Gold One and if we have a look at the share price of Gold One over the last quarter it's indicative of a lot of the gold stocks which we're seeing underperforming both the gold price in US dollar terms as well as the gold price in Australian dollar terms in US dollar terms gold is down 4% over the last quarter if we have a look at it in Australian dollar terms it's down around about 1% over the last last three months but if we have a look at the gold sector XGD it's actually down by 12% over the last quarter now gold one has performed even worse than that down 19% over the last three months and that's because of some of the problems it's been having at Motor East now they have seen industrial production the workforce there was about 1800 workers but of course they laid off more than 1000 workers there because of that industrial action which started uh, on the 3rd of June so obviously production
congestion coming through from Moda East a lot lower than expected. In fact, 22% below the company's own forecast. Yet despite this, they've actually managed to see quarterly gold production up 2% uh, for the quarter, coming in at 62,904 ounces. So all up, it does look like that industrial action and the lower production uh, coming out of Moda East has already been factored into the stock. But all up, I guess it is indicative of gold stocks listed on the market that they have been underperforming the gold price not only in uh, US dollar terms but also in Australian dollar terms.